Hi, and welcome back to my channel. This is the second part of my series on Home Assistant dashboard cards. In this video, I'll be showing you the entity, entities, gauge, and history graph cards, how they work, and how you can use them to enhance your dashboard. If you haven't seen the first part yet, I highly recommend checking it out before continuing. Now, let's dive right in. The first card I'm going to show you is one of the simplest and easiest to use, the Entity card. To add it, I'll go to my test view and enter Edit Mode. Then I'll click Add New Section, followed by Add Card. From the list of available cards, I'll select the Entity card. The first step is choosing an entity. I'll select Living Room TV. As soon as I do that, the card appears, showing me that the TV is on. I can rename it, and that name will be displayed on the card. I can also change the icon, but I'll leave it as it is. Next, there's the Attribute drop-down, where I can choose which information I want to display. For example, if I select Volume, the card will show that the TV volume is at 55%. If I choose Sound Output, it will display TV External Speaker. If I don't select any attribute, the default will be the entity's state, so I'll just see whether the TV is on or off. Now if I turn off the TV, the card updates automatically. However, keep in mind that some attributes may not be available when the TV is off. So if I want to display one of those attributes, the TV needs to be on. Let's turn it back on. Now that all attributes are available again, I'll set it to volume. I can also define a unit for the attribute. In this case, I'll enter percent to indicate volume percentage, and it appears on the card. There's also an option called Show State Color. If I enable this, the icon will change color when the entity is on, in this case when the TV is turned on. I can adjust visibility and layout the same way I showed in the first video. And there it is, the Entity card, fully configured. As you can see, it's a basic but useful card. Now let's move on to the next one, the Entities card. I'll go back to my test view, click Add Card, and scroll down to select the Entities card. The first thing I'll do is give it a title, which will appear at the top. Then I'll move straight to choosing Entities so I can better demonstrate how this card works. I'll remove the default ones and select a few kitchen-related entities, and just like that, they appear in the card. As with other cards, I can choose a theme if I have one configured. Below that, there's an option to enable or disable the header toggle. If I leave it on, a small toggle switch appears next to the title. If I turn it off, that toggle disappears, allowing me to turn all compatible entities on or off at once. Next, there's the Show State Color option. If I enable this, the icons will change color depending on the state of each entity. If it's off, they'll just stay the same. Now let's customize the header. By clicking the plus button, I can add different elements. The first one I'll try is a graph. After selecting this option, I need to choose an entity for the graph. I'll go with a temperature sensor. Now a small graph appears in the header, showing the temperature changes over the last 24 hours. This graph has two modes. If the detail toggle is off, it provides a simplified view of the entity's history. But if I turn it on, it tries to display as much raw data as possible within the selected time frame. By default, it shows data for 24 hours, but I can adjust that to display more or less history depending on what I need. Now let's remove the graph and try another option, buttons. Unlike other elements, this one doesn't have a visual editor, so I have to configure it manually using YAML. I'll start by adding a kitchen switch, and it immediately appears in the header. But to make it more useful, I'll add another button and customize both with names and icons, making them easier to recognize. Now that they're set up, let's see them in action. If I click the kitchen button, the kitchen light turns on, and if I click the increase hour button, it adds an hour to my alarm helper each time I press it. To show you how that works, I'll add the alarm entity to the card. Now, every time I click the button, you can see the hour increasing in real time. By the way, if you haven't seen my video on creating an alarm in Home Assistant, I highly recommend checking it out. I'll leave the link here. Now let's try the last header option, adding a picture. As soon as I select this, a default image appears, 
but I want to use a custom one. To do that, I just enter the file path under the image tag, and now my chosen picture appears in the header. And just like the header, I can also customize the footer with similar options. I'll quickly add a graph to show you how it looks. Now let's go back to the entities list and make a few final adjustments. By clicking the pencil icon next to an entity, I can customize it further. I can rename it, and that name will be displayed in the card instead of the default entity name. I can change the icon to something more relevant. And depending on the entity type, I can also add secondary information. For example, if I select Last Changed, that timestamp will appear right below the entity name. And that's it. The Entities card is now fully customized. It's a powerful way to display multiple entities in a single card while keeping everything neat and organized. Now, let's take a look at the Gauge card. I'll go back to my test view, enter Edit Mode, and click Add Card. From the list, I'll scroll down and select the Gauge card. The first step is selecting an entity. I'll leave the default one, as it's perfect for demonstrating how this card works. Next, I'll change the name to Fridge and set the unit to Times Opened. This unit will appear next to the value on the card. Now, if I start opening the fridge door, the gauge value will increase in real time. To control the gauge range, I can set minimum and maximum values. This helps define the scale so that the gauge doesn't just keep increasing indefinitely. I also have the option to enable a needle gauge which adds a moving needle indicator inside the gauge to show the current value more clearly. Another useful feature is severity settings. This allows me to create color-coded ranges, making it easier to see different levels at a glance. Basically, I can define thresholds, and the gauge will change color depending on where the current value falls. I'll set green at 0, yellow at 5, red at 15, now I can immediately tell where the value stands based on the gauge's color. If the value goes above the maximum I set, the needle will stop at the max value instead of exceeding it. Let's reset the fridge door counter back to zero. If I adjust the yellow threshold, the gauge will instantly update its color range to reflect the new settings. Now if I turn off the needle option, the gauge becomes black by default. It will only start showing colors once the value begins increasing. Let me demonstrate. If I open the fridge door, the gauge slowly fills up in green until it reaches 10, then it turns yellow. If I keep opening the door and the count reaches 15, it switches to red. This card also has a tap behavior setting, though it has fewer options than some of the other cards I showed in the first video. I'll choose Perform Action, and for the action, I'll select Counter Reset. Now I just need to set the entity to Fridge Door Counter. Now whenever I tap on the gauge, the value resets to zero. And that's it for the gauge card. It's a great way to visualize sensor values, track changes, and even interact with entities in a simple, clear format. For the last card in this video, let's take a look at the history graph card. I'll go back to my test view, enter edit mode, and click add card. From the list, I'll scroll down and select the history graph card. I'll start by adding a title, and then I'll go straight to choosing an entity so the graph makes sense. I'll select a temperature sensor, and then I'll add another entity, a humidity sensor. Right away, I can see two graphs, one showing the temperature history, and the other displaying the humidity levels history, both covering the last 24 hours. But I can change this. In the hours to show input, I can enter a different value. If I set it to six, for example, the graphs will adjust to show only the data from the last six hours. There's also an option to switch between linear scale and logarithmic scale. Here's what that means. In linear scale, each unit on the axis represents the same absolute change in value. In logarithmic scale, each unit represents a relative change. Visually, this means that smaller values are stretched out while larger values are compressed. I usually keep this option off since I find the linear scale easier to read. Next, I can set minimum and maximum values to define the range of the graph. But if I set values that are too restrictive, some data, like the humidity graph, might disappear because it falls outside the selected range. Luckily, there's an easy fix. By enabling extend y-axis limits to fit data, the graph automatically adjusts and now the humidity data appears again. Just like with other cards, I can also customize visibility and layout to fine-tune how the graph looks. And that's it for this video. 
I hope this helped you understand how these Home Assistant dashboard cards work. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me keep making these tutorials. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover next. In the next video, I'll be talking about my favorite Home Assistant dashboard card. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.